are live. Hello, everyone. Welcome to episode 11 of Dead Realm Season 3. I am your humble DM, and with me is almost all members of the party. Um, Ness it currently lost power. She was with us earlier. She may or may not join back, depending on circumstances, because she's tough and through a storm. So hopefully she'll be all right. Hopefully she'll join us. But if not, uh, we I was told in advance this, so it's not going to be too much of an issue. But um, if you remember last week... We, you guys helped the druid Mason, who was having some issues with controlling his, well, not lycanthropy, but lycanthropy-like type of situation with his animal shape ability. And he almost went feral on you guys, and you guys killed a bunch of goblins. You come to discover that, um, that Galaran, most likely, um, is the one that stole the proper supplies needed to keep the druid sanctuary tree alive which gives them their powers you guys then promise to bring the supplies back while you guys are at elderwood you guys then go to elderwood but before that tanji got a dream sequence where he communicated with his god solaris for the very first time in a long time and solaris gave him a task of restoring balance within the religious community so that way his brother orpheus doesn't take majority control of the pantheon or the powers of the pantheon tanji accepts this quest knowing that it was his destiny to fulfill this type of duty to his god you guys then went to the city just trying to walk in it didn't work out each guy tried to pull some deceptive moves but that didn't work out so you guys just barged in and that's where we left last time so i got some bad news for you if you think that we're gonna start with the combat i'm sorry to say it's not the case here, but you will get what you want, and that you will be in the city. So let me describe what happens. Combat ensues. Two guys with your capable abilities and what have you versus a bunch of guardsmen of Elderwood. Majority of them are going to come to your position. Instead of running like a 20v5 type of combat, I have decided it's for privacy's sake and, you know, to make it a bit more smoother and interesting that you guys were able to escape the onslaught in the streets stealthing away you guys did take some licks though in the combat taking 1d6 worth of damage so two points of damage to each of you throughout the whole like confrontation between the guards uh luminous is unfortunately uh evaporated since he was the biggest target of the group and it would make sense for the guards to go after the biggest threat and using that to you guys' advantage, you guys were able to sneak away onto the streets. You guys are now in the streets of Elderwood. Well, now, quote-unquote, criminals entering into the city. And you guys right now are trying to keep a little profile. Um, Latina was lost in the chaos and is currently not with you at this time. But you did see her manage to get out. But an hour has passed. It's the middle of the day. You guys think that he has died down for now, but there's no doubt in your guys' minds that word about you guys' breaking and entering the city is going to catch wind. So with that, there's some caution in the air that you have a task to complete. You have some time before you enter the city streets. And you three are currently in an alley, a dark alley, planning on what you guys are going to do. And at this time, the floor is yours, gentlemen. All right, we gotta find this Gallyrand character. Am I saying that right? Gallyrand. Yeah. So what do we know about him? He is a paladin of Orpheus, the god of the moon and night, I believe. Yes. They have a church uh, around here. He should have taken over a church by now, I believe so. I mean, it's not like we can exactly ask for directions. I guess maybe from a commoner, just a rando, but not like a guard, obviously. Maybe we buy some cloak. Yeah. Dalvin seems the least suspicious about us. I mean, I'm here to help you out. I mean, we kind of agreed to that. And of now course. we're down a member when we said we wouldn't be separated. I'm just anxious. I understand. We'll Let's see get out of the open. Is there yeah. a shop nearby we can duck into? 
Yes, there is. All right. What kind of shop is it? It is a general store shop. Oh, perfect. Uh, hello, good sir. Good shopkeeper. <laughs> oh, it's nice to okay, meet you. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> All right. Um, Angie is going to use his cape to cover his armor the best that he can. Sure, you do that. Uh, do you have anything in my size? I hear capes are very in this season. Let me roll some dice real quick. Give me a second, boy. Okay, continue. Um, you do you have anything in my size? You go into the shop, and the shop itself, uh, it's human size, so you kind of have to squat down a bit, uh, Fee Fi. Uh, but needless to say, there is a gentleman. Um, seems like to be cleaning some sort of item. You can't quite tell what it is from a distance. By the time you get to the counter, he sets it down. You turn around and you see that he's a middle-aged human male. Um, he says, oh, welcome to my shop. My name is Whoa. Didn't expect a giantkin to appear in my shop today. Well, it's the first for everything. My name is Frederick. How may I be of assistance? Yeah, I'm looking for a coat. Do you have anything? That might fit me. It's probably going to be like a blanket or a rug. Um, guessing, unless you guys have all sizes. I mean, we do have a cloak. We also have a bed sheet that could probably do just as well for your size, if that's fine with you. Unless you want a cloak specifically your size. Well, I mean, if you got one my size, I'll take it. I just wasn't expecting it. Mm. Very strange of you to get a cloak around this time, but I'm in the business of money, not necessarily discussion now let me see I if I hear that any cloaks here for you and what about you two gentlemen um oh sorry um he kind of looks down at both you dalvin and you tangy he goes oh sorry um, i didn't see you over the counter um, and what about you two gentlemen do you need anything while it gets your giant friend here a cloak i would also like a cloak uh preferably a little bigger than my size to help with my you know, my apparel. He has sciatica. <laughs> Three cloaks, please. He kind of looks at you guys questionably, raising his eyebrows. He goes, very well. Um, let me see if I can find one in your size first, as he gestures towards B5. And he's digging through the clothes, and he says, well, besides the cloaks, um, do you need anything else, like food or general supplies of that nature? Do you perhaps have potions i don't sell potions at this shop you have to go to bertha's store it's right around town somewhere it's on the cross the all right uh, aside from the cloak we do need directions and i have a favor to ask of you as well well it depends on where you guys are trying to go to and depends on the favor itself my friend oh here's a cloak and then he says that'll be two gold for the cloaks <laughs> each two gold i'm gonna put so two gold each, yes. so that's six gold total. Yes. I'm going to put ten gold on the table and say, uh, you said you were in the business of making money, not having discussions, and I trust that extends to the guards. You perhaps wouldn't be having any discussions if any characters were to come around this shop asking about us, would you? Make a charisma check. All right. <laughs> Charisma is my middle name. My name is Fifi Charisma Fofum. <laughs> I have the documents to prove it. Seven. I'm going to fate die that, and I rolled a 13. Alrighty. Dope. He says to you, he looks at the coin, he says, thank you for your patronage. Now, again, what is, what are you trying to find in what is the favor you wish to ask specifically? Uh, we're we... looking for a man named Gallirand or some such, and we have reason to believe he might be at the Church of Oris, if there is one in these towns. <laughs> <laughs> um, he then says, oh, you're talking about Sir Gallirand of, or of the Temple of Orpheus. I'm assuming that's who you're looking for. Yeah, I'm not from around here. I don't know how to pronounce it, but that sounds right. I don't judge yes, people we're... how they pronounce names, but trying to get Gallerand is, well, kind of impossible nowadays. He's busy with governmental duties now that him and his temple have taken over most of the town. But okay. if you seek an audience with him, I would suggest finding his right-hand priest, Francis Nightshade. 
He's Francis a, Nightshade. Yeah. He gives you a description, okay, but... and Tangent, you realize it's the same description of the priest that visited your town in Elder Hell. Oh, already. So he's like, normally on a day to day basis, I know you're just an average dude and you're not his handler, but like, you, you just imagine he would be up in the temple doing government duties most of the day, if you had to guess. Probably. That's what I would go if I was in charge of the town. Okay, now, what if. Dalvin lights a blunt. <laughs> okay. Not in the shop! He says, no, no, I don't mind. If tobacco's still oh. fill out here, then I don't mind that. Excellent. That, that'll give us a little extra odor. I like that. <laughs> so, um, if you personally had to go, like, if you needed to get something done in the temple, who would you go to? Like, you don't have, like, a, a cousin that works there or anything like that? I'm sorry to disappoint you, friends, but I'm not a religious man nowadays anymore. I used to go to the temple of Solaris here, but they, well, they destroyed that temple long, long ago. Nowadays, I just kind of make do every day, take it day by day, you know? Well, thank you very much for your time, good sir. And remember, we were never here. He's, he says, well, I got the gold, so there's nothing for you to worry about. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. He said food. What kind of food do you have? Well, it depends on what type of food you wish. If you wish for meats, I have some meats. If you want some berries, I got berries. If you want grain, well... Not grain, but stuff that comes out of grain like bread. I could supply that as well. Unless you're some sort of cheese connoisseur, of course. I have too much cheese, unfortunately. What is this cheese? You, you never tried cheese before? No, so it's mostly meats for dwarves. Mm, yes. I see. Dwarves don't have cattle in their cavern. He takes half a cheese wheel out. He says, this, my friend, is cheese. It's made out of milk that comes from a cow. I'm surprised you would have never tried it with meat, because it would taste excellent with meat. Here, try a piece. He shaves some of this cheese out, and he hands you, like, a small handful amount. That one smells it first, and then eats it? Um... It has, like, that old cheese odor, but it's not, like, strong and potent. So it's not rotten, but it smells funky. You say this goes well with meats. Yes, it does. Here, just try it. Dalvin does. It tastes really cheesy and really, really good. Kind of like that smoked Gouda type of thing, but with some funk in it. Oh, this would, this would go well with the animal we killed earlier. Oh. How much cheese? You said you guys, you have too much cheese. How, how, much, how much cheese do you have? Depends what how much you need exactly. Um, if you say you've killed an animal, well, may I ask which animal you killed? You're not asking for religious reasons, are you? No, I'm asking what type of animal you killed, so I can pair you with the right cheese, of course, and to tell you how much you need and how much it'll cost. All right, if I remember, we killed a deer, didn't we? Yes. I think that's right. Yeah, we did kill a deer. I'll say an elk. I know um, killing female deer is kind of regional taboo. Uh, we killed an elk. <clears throat> Very well. Well, this cheese you just had would work well with it, but um, how big was the elk? Was it like a full-grown adult, an adolescent? I think it was a full-grown adult. Then I recommend getting the rest of this half cheese. I could sell it to you for about three gold. I have enough gold. Dalvin has some three gold. All right. And he gives you the cheese. He says, and uh, do be aware, um, if you are going to use the cheese, when you shave down a great amount of it, just make sure you cover it with a rag or something. You don't want maggots getting in it. Maggots are going to get in my bag to get this cheese. Well, not, <laughs> if it's in your bag, it shouldn't be nothing to worry about unless you like tossing your bag in the mud all the time. I mean, I'm an adventurer. I mean, I feel like that's just that just comes with being an adventurer. Yes, and adventurers always take care of their bag because that's where they hold all their shit. The moment their bag breaks, but, it's all over for them. 
Tell me about these maggots. Are they edible? How much protein do they have? I mean, you can't eat them. You could probably get sick, but I don't know how you dwarves handle bugs. I don't know. Everything's so new. All right, thank you. Thank you for this cheese. Of course. And, and hopefully I won't be seeing you around, he says sarcastically, before you guys make your way out of the shop. With the cloaks on. Put the cloaks on while we're in the shop. Yep. All right. We want to go stop for potions, or do we want to beeline it to the temple? I say we might want to look for Lavina, but going for the temple seems all right. Well, she's got a good head on her shoulders. She'll probably go to the temple. All right. How much gold do we have? We might we need, need to buy potions. That's a great I've question. Tried. You're at. You're asking the guy who just spent 10 gold, so I'm asking how much gold do you have? Five. Yeah, I got 20. Because I'm a thrifty spender. I spent my gold on armor that I never picked up in the dwarven. <laughs> because we ran away. <laughs> that sucks, dude. Oh, man, that blows. He's probably sitting in his window. He's like, <laughs> used it as an advertisement. No, it's it's like, nonsense. Oh. Nonsense. Nonsense. This is the part where an apprentice would take that armor and come looking for us. If we were to wait here for a few days, I am sure that someone's coming with his delivery because we yeah. dwarves always complete an order. That's amazing that you guys have cross nation like delivery. Like you guys just follow people until you find them. That's that's really cool. You're stubborn like that, and we live long. <laughs> yep, that okay, so that, it's on its way dude it's it's being delivered it's in transit right now so they might know my name so they might leave it at my parents house perhaps DM yeah because he's gonna they're gonna come <laughs> here the the delivery man's gonna come to this city and be like hey we're looking for this dude and then the guard's gonna be like yeah that's a criminal and so I wonder how that's gonna affect the delivery process That's why, sure. it's, that's why we have to seek refuge now. Let's make a beeline. Alrighty. We should go, yeah, to the temple. Alright. Um, as you guys go to the temple, um, it's a little bit deeper inside the city, closer to the governmental buildings. And it takes you a while to get there. You are wearing cloaks. Um, a few guards might look at you weird, but probably because, you know, you guys are wearing a cloak on a hot day. Um, but nonetheless... They don't seem to notice you in the moment. You continue to venture forward towards the center, and you, when you do go to the center, Tangi, you see something that kind of leaves a sour taste in your mouth. You see temples of clearly different architectures, and you know from your religious background that you are... that different architectures of different gods mean something to their god. And it's kind of a shame that you see... Um, a bunch of these religious guys, guardsmen, religious priests from Orpheus are directing some halflings and gibbons to rebuild the architectures of each temple to that of Orpheus. And you just see the holy symbol of Orpheus throughout most of these temples. That sucks. Let's keep on moving. I don't want to look at this. Wait, before we leave, is there one for, uh, uh, not Luminous, uh, uh, Solaris? There was, as you see some of the old architecture, but now they're installing the symbol and replacement of the symbol for Sol. Is the building still open, perhaps? It's I want to check open. that out. You want to check inside? Yeah, maybe there's still something left. That hasn't been taken down yet. Alright. Do you guys follow? Yep. Alright. You guys go in with Tangi. And you see that they're completely changing the architecture. Even on the inside. Um, there isn't much uh, decor of Solaris left in this building. However, you do see... Um, you do see one particular priest that 
looks familiar to you, Danby, and kind of taking a closer look, you see that it is the same priest that came into your town. It is Francis Nightshade directing some people of where to put stuff. And he just says, okay, you just move that, tum that symbol of Solaris. You take it out to the back. We'll burn it with the rest of it. And he says this out loud, giving instructions to the humans and the halflings working on it. Good, sir. Do you know where the main temple of Orpheus is? We're looking to pay tribute. Um, he turns around and he says, Oh, my child. Well, the main one is obviously, of course, towards the center. It is now the newer temple. It was the first temple to be constructed oh. since Sir Galleran's um, inquisition of these temples. There you'll seek to pay, pay your sacrifice to Orpheus himself. Amazing. We have heard many good uh, words about Sir Galloran. Uh, is it possible we could meet with him? It would be an honor to be touched by such a holy figure. He then says, well, I wish you would be able to see the greatness of Sir Galloran, but unfortunately he is busy with other matters. Perhaps you shall see him later on in the night when the moon shines on the temple. He usually gives a small speech before he rests for the night, but... Unfortunately, that would be the only time you would see him, and it would be more of a public gathering type of event. Thank you, sir, and thank you for your time as well. Of course, and may Orpheus guide you in darkness, my friends. They will. So, what do we need to do with Gallyrand? We're not trying to kill him, right? We're trying to get. We're trying to steal something from his house. Uh, the soil, but uh, I think that getting rid of him would help restore the former guy. Yeah. Especially because, I mean, if he's coming around into your community, you don't want these people you know, doing this to your yeah. town. So, so we just want to cap this dude in broad bit moonlight. In broad moonlight, as the saying goes. And just hope we don't get caught. If we get caught, we stand proud and <laughs> we stand proud and uh, just sh make a new order, I guess. This dude how, runs the how, whole town. How daring if we get are we caught? Go? I think we're gonna die if we get caught. I'm sure that not a lot of people in this town still. Uh, I believe a lot of people in this town still have the old face. He hasn't been here for very long. Maybe they would but, rise with us. Okay, yeah, they would have to. I mean, if, if we if the guard comes again and says, like, we can take out one dude, we can even take out probably five guards. But, like, I mean, how many guards work for the whole city, you know? As the saying goes, as the gods, as our fathers and mothers, brothers all are we. Okay. All right, I can get behind that. I think we should find... Oh, you're talking about assassinating someone? Yes, that is oh, exactly. <laughs> he, he wants to assassinate the mayor. <laughs> but we need to steal the item. Yes, we can get that back. Uh, so but I think if, taking him down takes more presidents. What if we go to his house during the speech, and that gives us the whole speech time to steal the item, and then when he gets back into his house, we kill him. We're lying in wait when he comes home. To be honest, yeah. having, having our druid friend with us when we fight him would definitely benefit us. So you want to steal the item, leave, get the druid, and come back? That could help, but again, I don't know if this is time, if we have the time. Especially with just the three of us, when it's supposed to be four. Assassination is pretty lofty. Yeah. It's my duty, but... Uh, um, I mean, like... What are our odds of returning to the city if we leave? If we go get the soil and leave? We have to break back into the city because now we're wanted criminals here. That's very true. <laughs> that's, okay. If, if I mean, we want to... I mean, we can change our, our faces. I can... I can... 
I can cut, I can cut this, uh, <clears throat> I do what's necessary. Your beard? Your beard. Uh, yeah, maybe just masks instead, but, I, yeah, yes. I think, yeah, I think if we're going to assassinate him, we have to do it, if not with, tonight, and while we're in town. With four races of varying sizes, we're very standoutish. So I think I can, time is important. Yeah, exactly. So I think we need to decide right now if we're going to assassinate him. And if we are, we have to do it tonight. Or we, we can just steal tonight. the dirt and leave. I say we do it tonight. And if we... I don't know. <laughs> it's going to sound stupid, but I think... I had the lofty pursuit of having him join our side and bring balance, but that's not going to work. We would need some time to interrogate him if we wanted to try to convince him to see our way, but I mean, if he's a holy zealot, I truly believe it's not possible. Okay. It's just a lofty pursuit. So you vote assassinate him tonight? Yes. Dalvin? I say we find an inn and focus on Lavina first. That's find true. Lavina. Oh. Yes, Lavina is definitely needed. We Lavina we... knows the mission. Yeah. I didn't even know what the hell you guys are talking about. I need a clarification. That's fair. True. I don't know if we can afford to sit around and, and wait for her or, or find her and risk getting found ourselves, you know? Let's go find her. I think that's most important. If we can't take him All down, right. at least we need to stick together. If you both want to find her, we'll go. Let's do it. Let's go find her. All right. As you guys kind of look around throughout the city, you guys spend the next two hours just going through the entire city, just trying to find Lavina. Um, it's getting kind of tricky, you know. You guys are all incognito, so you're trying to find someone who's also incognito. That isn't, you know the actual criminal type. Um, as you go looking around, you just hear... You just hear some noise coming from the guard um, as you pass by a pair. He says, yo, did you hear that, you know, they captured one of the people that broke into the city? Oh, really? No. I heard, yeah, I heard she was also a witch, too. Oh, what do you think is going to happen? Well, I don't know. Sir Gallery might burn her at the stake tonight. Who knows? She might be sacrificed to Orpheus. Oh... Okay. Okay. So, I'm not going to say anything <laughs> while we're overhearing this, but as we walk away, I'm <laughs> conversing with my compatriot. It's, so this puts us in an awkward spot because the prison escape is going to be really hard. Just as hard Ooh. as assassinating the freaking mayor. It doesn't but matter. We have to do it. Rescuing her at the execution is, at, I think it's going to be easier. Or at least while she's in transport to being executed. Like, I think we kind of, the best case scenario is if they decide to execute her tonight, and then we can save her tonight, you know? Let's yes, just let's find go where to she is for right now. Yes. Let's find her right now and then decide. We don't even know for a fact, it's just a rumor. Maybe if, if they don't execute her, if they don't announce the execution at the start of the speech, we should start a chant uh, to convince them to burn the witch. But, like, we got to make sure she shows up tonight. Because I don't think we have time to wait around. You know, we can't stay in this town for two weeks. As it becomes nighttime, I have an idea. I'm going to start rallying some people, people I can trust. While you okay. are, you guys do anything else, by the way, or no? Um, I'm gonna lay low. If I can do some scouting, I will. Um, maybe there's, like, a ladder leaning up against a city wall that'd be good to know about, or okay. convenient foothold's a good spot to climb up the wall if stuff goes south. Mm -hmm. okay. uh, knowing where the prison is and where the execution would be and what the path between them looks like, because I might want to ambush them. Okay. Um, so I'm, I'm trying to, to lay low while being... 10 feet tall in a town of six footers. <laughs> okay. And also conspicuously see everything in town while also not okay. being seen. 
right. So I don't know how well that works. Right. So you're going to scout. Uh, Tangie's going to go find some people. And then what are you doing, Delvin? I'm going to look for this execution grounds. Okay. All right. So let me roll d4 here just to determine who does what first. All right. We're starting with uh, Delvin. You try to find execution ground. Speaking to some individual, you try to talk some some things to them. Like, oh, have you heard of the? Well, I'll let you role play it actually. Um, so how are you gonna go about this? Uh, <clears throat> I guess I'm just gonna start walking. <laughs> okay, I'll start walking. And I guess I'm gonna just keep walking. Uh, at some point, I feel like I'm gonna hit one of the edges of the um. Of the town, like the town gates. Mm -hmm. And before that, I'm gonna find some some random person at stores. Like, hello, good sir. Um, quick question. Yeah. Uh, what's the garrison in this town? You said the garrison. Yes. What of them? Like, are you trying to find a godsman? Or? Yes. Where Where is their headquarters? Yeah. Where Where can I find like their station? Well, they're like in the middle of the city, and he gives you directions. You'll find it there. They're in the center of the city? They're not in the center of the city. Um, they're on more of like the middle of the city. See, you got the inner city, which is where all the temples and government buildings are. Then you have the outer rims of the city, which is where um, guards are stationed, but their guard houses aren't there. That's where most of our homes are and shops are. And then in between that is where, you know, the real expensive shops, inns, diners, and guards townhouses are located. Okay, and where are we currently? You are at edge of town, my friend. Yes, 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 that's perfect. And you said there are diners on the inside. How nice are these diners? Mm, it depends on gold. If you're looking for something affordable, it's more better to go to an inn. Well, at least you could drink and then sleep that same building, you know what I mean? Yeah, that's true. I appreciate your help. Yeah, yeah. And then he kind of carries on with his day. I head towards the, the station. All right. You, after some time, you head towards the guard station. It seems pretty standard. There's two guardsmen guarding the front of the building. Um, but what do you do? Is there any like buildings that are taller than the station that I could probably access? Um, we'll say there is. There's like some buildings that are slightly taller than the guardhouse itself. I want to try to access those roof, those, one of those rooftops. Okay, so hmm. let me look for something real quick. So luckily, um, to gain access to the top is not too much of an issue. It's kind of like the building's located, um, so it's right next to another building, but in between the building you're trying to go on. And the other building is kind of like this weird alleyway staircase that goes upward. So you're able to gain like towards the top of that. Um, just go ahead and make a agility check to see how, um, just to see how able you are able to get to the top without anyone noticing. Because you are near a guardhouse. And the shady figure going on top of the building. Well, that's a 10. 10? All right, let me make a roll here. Let's see if the guards notice anything weird. All right, I rolled an 11, unfortunately. Um, as you are beginning to walk, you do see like one of the guardsmen at the top. You do see one of the guardsmen near the building kind of point to a direction you're at, and then both of those guardsmen seem to start walking towards it seems like where you are at. What do you do? All right, so you said that the rooftop is on top of a building in between two other buildings? So, like, there's a staircase that's kind of like an access point to between both of these buildings, and as you get to the top of the staircase, the two guards notice you and are walking towards, like, your general direction. But you're able to try, can try to access the top. You just got to go through, like, this one part of the building before going on top, but the guards are running it. Not running, but they're walking towards your direction. What do you do? Are they below me or above me? They're below you right now, and they're walking towards your. Oh. Way. Okay, I still want to access the top of the roof. Um. Hmm. 
I don't know if there's a way to like at the to of the get them off my trail. There. I just want to. I want to access the roof. I still want to push through. Okay. Um, go ahead and make another agility check for me, then, as you're gonna basically have to hop into it. Fourteen. Fourteen. All right. Let me make a roll here. On my part. Wow. Okay. So you are able. You're like, oh shit. And you know, you're in a small stature, so it's not quite easy to get to the top. But eventually, you um, able to leverage, do some minor parkour maneuvers to get up to the top, and you roll onto the roof. Um, five seconds later, the guard goes to where you're at. They're like, hmm, I could have sworn that dude was up here. And they're like. Dang, you're seeing things. The sun probably got into your eyes. Come on, we gotta get back down. And then they seem to walk away. Alright, what time of day is this? What time of day is this? It's sunset right now. Alright, perfect. I'm gonna kind of like, like spinner, splinter cell, like crawl on my belly towards <laughs> like the edge of this roof, okay. overlooking the prison cell. <laughs> okay. You look over and you're trying to find. You know, some form of whether an execution or an executioner's block or something along the lines of that, or maybe even Lavina if you're lucky. Um, you look around the guardhouse and you see that at the back of it, you do see what seems like to be a man in executioner outfit, not the black hood, which is not accurate. It's more like a weird, like elite guard levels because they just dress like regular people, but more nightly ceremonial clothes. Sharpening a long sword and there's another one seems to be a worker of his building seems like to be a post of sorts that one would be tied up to along with gathering the firewood as they are loading the supplies on the back of a wagon uh, am i able to track where the wagon is heading from where i am like vision wise would you like to wait to see what happens? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Some time passes. After 30 minutes or so, you do see pack the pole, the long pole along with some fire at the back. You do see the guard, the quote-unquote executioner, put away, sheath his sword, get on the stagecoach, and it is currently walking towards the center of town, closer to the temple. And no one's by the post that the worker created? Nope. Not at the moment, no. Okay. Um, hmm. Alright, I'm gonna take one of my crossbow bolts. Okay. I'm gonna take my rope. Alright. I'm gonna tie a rope onto it. I'm gonna try to shoot it at the post. Okay. So, I need to know exactly what you're planning on doing with this. I am trying to sabotage the post by loosening it so that when someone is tied to it it'll just fall off hmm. and you're trying to I'm going to try to yank it you want to from try to far yank away it? <laughs> with this rope and crossbow <laughs> bolt <laughs> from 50 feet away <laughs> if anyone could do it um, you have rope, yes? Yes, I actually have two ropes. <laughs> okay. Um, okay. So length is not going to be an issue. I would say go ahead and make an attack roll. And if you hit, then it'll tie to the pole. And then I'll make you make a power check in order to see if you have the ability to pull the pole from 50 or plus so feet away. So go ahead and just make an attack roll for me, bro. Alright, I got an 11, but I think this is like a fake die. die. If you do, I will say if you fail, you will fall off the building. Oh. <laughs> you got this. So if you want to fake oh. die, you can fake die. I'm tired of using this Albert die. Oh, can I grab my real die? Sure, Give me man. one second. You can grab your real dice. <laughs> That's what I'm using. I'm, like, yeah, I've been using this Albert die <laughs> on this Albert. Yeah. <laughs> But if you do use this oh. fate roll, and if you do fail, you will fall off the building, and you will take fall. Yeah, give me. And you'll go fall somewhere. Right else. Let me grab my. 
yeah. And you'll fall right in front of the guards, I'll say, too. So, so I understand. So while Dalwin carefully takes his aim, uh, let's go to... Let me just roll to see who goes next. Let's go to FIFA. All right. You're at going. the temple currently, and you're kind of just trying to blend in. Um, you, you get a couple looks at you because of your net height, but it doesn't seem to um, peer off nonetheless. Um, you do try to like be stealthy, try to get near the temples. Go ahead and just make a general agility check for me, please. Just to see how stealthy you All can be. Right. Well, I'm not the most agile, but I am somewhat gile. That's a 12. Okay. It's enough. Um, you are able to um, kind of use the shadows. It is sunset, so there's a lot of shadows looking over. You kind of use them as your advantage as a giant. You could fit well into the shadows. Um, not to say that um, anyone could do it, but the weird angles and stuff, you're just able to just use that and your height in combination to try to not defer anyone and try to make you not as notable. So you're nearby okay. the temples right now. What are, you, what are you trying to do here? So I'm looking around. From what I heard from the guards uh, and the priest, there's going to be a speech. Uh, so I'm looking around for like a balcony or a stage somewhere. The speech might be made. And then I heard a rumor they're going to burn Levina at the stake. A stake, you know, like a fire that big takes a while to build. So I'm looking around to see if there's any like, you know stakes in the ground perhaps or bonfires ready to be lit on fire that kind of thing first i just want to figure out where are the key events going to take place tonight okay so i'm not going to make any roll it's pretty apparent um you see it seems like it to be a balcony being created by some workers you can tell that these workers have been building it quite frequently based on the pace that they're picking it up but they are building the balcony you do see francis nightshade again trying instructing the workers to build the balcony fast. Um, you do also see, um, seems like to be a station appropriately being set aside near the base of the stage being made. Um, you do see like a small area being made with that. Um, and then some guards try to implement safety measures as well as what you're able to see. Okay, yeah, so they might be trying to keep the crowd somewhat distant from the fire. Maybe the the fire is enough for people to stay away from it. I'm trying to think of a plan. Like, do I see any, like, obvious routes where, like, oh, I could ambush the guards here and get Lavina before she goes to the stake? Or is there, like, a good place to hide where I could jump out and grab her after she's tied to the stake? Like, those are the kinds of things I'm I'm trying to see. Is there anything I see that, that makes me immediately think of a good plan to get her out of this? Make a perception check. All right. Well, I'm not perceptive, but I am somewhat active. That's a three. Uh, you do not, unfortunately. You're trying to find, like, clever ways to try to, like, grab Lavina, what have you, but, you know, not everything is fully built, so you can't, like, know what exactly it is. But as you do that, you look towards your left, and at this point, Sirius, if you're back, you can roll the dice to see what happens. Fifteen. Fifteen. All right. You just see a wild crossbow bolt go through with some rope attached to what seems like to be a back of a trolley. Uh, back of a trolley. Back of a stagecoach. So go ahead and now make a power check, Sirius, to see... We are able to successfully pull it. Thirteen. God damn. Thirteen. Hmm. Hmm. Of course I'm unlucky. No, I'm sorry. I got a plus three. That's fourteen. I'm sorry. There you go. Um, you know what? I think it will be a cool moment, so I'll override it. <laughs> um, as you shoot, you quickly get on your feet and begin to pull and as it does um it takes a large amount of strength and as you do you're able to pull it enough to where it naturally like falls off like a log falling off of a back of a truck for lack of a better term and as it does fifi you do see it seems like to be this rope being shot at one of the main poles and then being rolled over and the cart crashing 
down. You don't know where that came from. Oh. Okay. So, the cart's crashing as they're trying to build it. These guys, these workers, are they follow the man in the robes. They do what the man in the robes says. Yes, and as this happens, you see some guardsmen along with some other priests like walk towards the stagecoach to see what's going on. If we could get some of those robes, we could probably just convince these guards to like stop building or something like that. <laughs> um. Okay, I want to... While maintaining as much stealth as I can, I want to get closer to those those guards and the priests. See if I can maybe overhear what they're saying. I'm 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 not sure if I need to jump these dudes, but if I gotta jump these dudes at sunset, <laughs> I will. You know. Go ahead and make a, another agility check for me, please. All right. Thirty twenty. All right. You go towards it. Um, a large gathering of the crowds. You're kind of just sticking to the alleyways. As you get there, you do see what seems like to be the executioner, actually, and, like, his um, servants, like, get, picking themselves up and trying to load everything back into the carts. And the executioner says, "You, I don't know how you did not secure that. Now we gotta start rebuilding all over again. And then when a priest says, no, 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 it would be too late by the time you finish. Just handle and we'll try to support it as much as we can. Excuse me, just listen. I don't want to botch this, all right? I don't want a log falling onto a burning log onto a crowd in case that shit happens. And then the guy says, don't worry. We'll make the necessary precautions. Just, you know, these priests say that they need the log, the stick now. So let's just, we'll help you pick these up. We'll load it back into the back of the truck. And then, truck. We'll load it back into the back of the coach. And then we could set up begin to set up the stake along with the rest of the stage and the priest says yes yes hurry up please we do not it's almost time for sunset and when the sun sets the moon will rise and sir galloran will make his presence and you see the facial expression of the guards and the execution be like as if they heard this like a billion times at this point they're quite annoyed by it but nonetheless mm. they begin to load um the stuff that fell off the coach back onto the coach, and then going towards the stage. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, so it seems like uh, some forces unknown to me are working to disrupt this event. <laughs> uh, that's good. So I'm, I'm going to let them keep doing what they're doing. Trying to look around and see if there's a way I can sabotage this from where I am, but nothing's coming to my head right now. Like, if I pour water on the logs, that's way too obvious. If I if I try to start playing my instrument to distract people, I'm calling attention to the fact that I'm a fugitive. I, I can't exactly walk up to someone and try to convince them of anything again because I'm a fugitive. So I think I just got to stay in the area and, and wait for my friends to appear because I don't feel like I can safely make a move right now. If I find a, a good hiding spot, like I'll try to inch closer and closer to the action as I find a space. But I think right now, the best thing I can do is wait. Fair enough. And with that, we go to Tandri. Now, Tandri, you're trying to find some fulcrum. What exactly I'm, is your goal? I am trying to find people of the old faith to uh, essentially rally behind me and perhaps set a revolution after the after the uh, burning and uh, I would go up to people especially of uh, followers of Solaris or previous followers of Solaris and uh, and uh, just <laughs> I'm losing my words I uh, have them rally behind me and see if I can get them on my side see if I can convince them that the old faiths are coming back gotcha. well you know the classic story with adventures. If you're trying to find something that big, best wise thing is trying to find an inn or a tavern, maybe a combination of both, to try to find the kind of people you're looking for, especially those who are trying to hide in the shadows. You go to oh, right. a inn known as the Dog's Tap House. You go inside. 
Um, there's a bar. It's not really packed, but it's not quite... It's not packed, and there's a couple of few patrons in the bar as well. Um, you go up to the counter, and you see a gentleman by, um, who is middle-aged, um, black hair that goes up to his... Um, just right before it hits his shoulders, and he's wearing has a big handlebar mustache, and you set he's kind of the husky side for lack of build uh, descriptions, but he's finishing polishing polishing a mug. And he says, "Hey, welcome to the Dog's Tap House. I'm Miller Fadbrand. How may I be of service to you? Would you like some ale, some mutton, maybe?" Uh, I'm looking for something a bit more. I wouldn't know how to say, um... Tanji's getting a bit quiet, uh... Because uh, he's quite nervous. I'm looking to... Start something. Start what, exactly? Uh, just... A common talk, where I can speak to a few people. Uh, perhaps get the tavern into a set of mind, perhaps? Uh, the tavern the tavern here kind of looks like says, you, could you speak plainly please? I'm not following, I'm sorry. Uh, are you a follower in how would I say? Don't take this the wrong way, are you a follower of one of the old days? Used to be, but not anymore. And why would that be? Yeah. The gods actually help us out a bit. You know, there wouldn't be this much control, to be honest with you. Um, this town, the whole city itself has just been religious for way too long. And I'm not one with the faiths. So if you respect one of the faiths, then don't take this the wrong way. I just do not care for gods and what have you. Very well. I. Okay. We I need to pray. Any... Still haven't answered my question though. Would you like some meat, some ale? And then at this point, you hear a gentleman at the end of the park. He said, and "You see another halfling male, a little bit older. You thought you recognized this person, but you don't. And he's wearing some dirty robes." And he goes, "Oh, Timothy, Timothy! Thank goodness you came back. Um, excuse my boy, my Timothy. He is not one for talking. You know, doesn't talk plainly." Um, he'll just have some ale and mutton. You know, it'll be on me. And he puts down like Paco says, very well. If he was, if this boy was a family member of yours, he should have told me. I would have been no, it would have been no issue for me, Archibald, to assist you. Oh, of course, of course. Yeah. You know me, you know, always forgetting. He says, very well, I'll give you a few minutes. And then as soon as he walks away, he says, you must not talk about the fates here, my friend. Do you know of a place where I could? Yes, yes. As soon as you grab your meal, just join me in the corner there. The most innkeepers in this town usually keep tabs with guards. Here. It's very good that I stepped in when it when it came to it. And well, I'm not too sure whether it was an act or whether you were generally nervous or not, but luckily that innkeeper did not bought bought it, bought it, not one bit. For all we know, he could have told someone about what you just told the guardsman what you just told and judging from your appearance you're not one to be seen and at this point the the innkeeper comes in and goes very go here's your here's your ale here's your mutton kid and he goes oh thank, thank you. you thank you thank you thank you so much madam i'm gonna just take my boy over here and we're just gonna go into court he says of course archibald just let me know if you need anything and then he kind of just walks away as guys he says oh, come my boy come we will sit in the corner and discuss the thing Alrighty. Thank you. You take uh, your you take your meat and mutton and you go into the corner booth. Okay. First off, are you a follower? Oh yes, yes, of course. I've been a follower. I've been a follower for quite a very long very long time, you see. Um, I've been <laughs> the, the, the oldest man to have served Solaris himself, and when I heard that a Cleric of Solaris barged right into the city gates. I thought to find him. Luckily, you've come to me. <laughs> I would. I predicted this moment. You see, Solaris told me that we would be safe. That one of his chosen would come to liberate us. 
I, I'm sure it would be you. But what I've heard so, is that you're not alone. You're right. I have friends who are working with me. So it's true. You have heard the rumors of 50 years ago about a chosen uh, coming to fruition. Well, I don't know about 50 years ago, my boy. I don't know what you speak of. But I did have a dream a few days ago. This occupation of Orpheus has been going on for quite, quite some time, for several months now. And I've been keeping my faith secrets. See, they almost killed all of Solaris's priests and followers. They would kill anyone of any faith. They killed tons. Uh, they tried to des they've been desecrating the faiths of many other gods, especially Solaris himself, to the point where they're even rebuilding everything. I'm fortunately it seems like I'm the only one left, but I do have some other people of some other faiths that are still living amongst the city. Perhaps we could offer you some aid, but it's not much, unfortunately. Uh, thank you very much. I just am curious. 50 years ago in Elder Howell, I believe there were rumors coming about that a Chosen was coming into fruition. Have you heard of that? Unfortunately, my memory does not serve me well, my dear boy. But what I do know is that this city was at peace at one point. All religious faiths, um, everything balanced, every, every faith practiced properly. Um, then, you know, when the plague came about, many people thought, gave a sanctuary to our walls, and all of us were assisting them. And then, several months ago, Sir Gowan Blackwater came into power as of late. He's a great paladin for Orpheus, but rumors have told me that he has gained some artifact to communicate with Orpheus himself. And ever since he held that artifact, he's been saying that many uh, of Orpheus's commands, he was commanded by Orpheus himself. Whether that's proof or not, I'm not too sure, but it does seem odd that Orpheus would engage in such activity. But, I don't know whether it's the item, or maybe it is indeed the will of Orpheus. We have not seen the artifact himself, but ever since he did that, he was very uh, doable in this inquisition of the other faiths. We've been trying to hold him back for some time, but now he has gained full control of the city. This artifact, do you know what it looks like? I'm not too sure. I think it's a moonstone, if I recall, if my memory serves correctly. Hmm. It's a rare artifact that only the chosen devout of Orpheus were given. And um, I'm not too sure if, why Orpheus would command him doing such atrocities. No god would do such things. Tanji's thinking back to the Dwarven town. And thing to in the caves there were uh i believe it was a crystal eye that spoke to us yes i believe uh do i have any recollections that us this moonstone might be a similar object you, being a person of faith there's no way to connect either or to be honest with you you just saw this one and now you're hearing news of this artifact but you don't really see the two connecting but you have heard that Gods would give artifacts to their chosen to communicate with them directly. So, you know, that could be a thing. I was staring, but I have a plan. And I need you to show me the rest of the faithfuls that you know. That I At, show you, my dear boy. But what is the tonight? Plan? Tonight there will be a witching hour or something of the sorts where someone will be burned. I want to get people together to in a sort, make a revolution, take back what's ours, our old faith. He then, Archibald then says, uh, if it's a plan, I need to know more of it. And quite frankly, if we are going to risk um, the rest of whatever the faiths are remaining here in the city, then we must know the full plan carefully, because once the rest of us go down, and if you were to fall into battle, then it would show more of Galarin's control over the city, and it would undoubtedly made him the, made him and Orpheus the undisputed faith in the city. So if we were to put our lives at risk, we need to know the full plan before we put it into effect. And I strongly recommend you get your friends, and I get mine, and then we'll partner up and discuss a plan here tonight. 
right before. Here. Yes, right before they the the ceremony would begin. Very well. I will go find my friends, and you bring yours here, and we'll meet up. Of course, of course. Now, um, I would strongly recommend drinking some of your ale and mutton, leaving food unattended here. We'll throw you off. Of course. I will. And he will spend the next, like, 30 minutes eating. Yep. And head off. Yep, and you head off. And then he'll head off in the opposite direction. After some brief amount of time, um, Dallin, you're able to get away and able to find Tanji. And then you two are just meeting up and you're trying to find um, Fifi. And you went back to where the temple was. Or, uh, and you do notice Fifi. He is a giant after all. You do see him as they are slowly beginning to finish building the stage and the stake. And the sun is almost about to set. And you three finally meet with one another. Come with me. I have people. All right. Dalvin? Oh, he's muted. You're trying to speak, uh, Sirius. You're muted. Wait, I have a rooftop. Well, I... We don't have a lot of time. I know, but it's right over the prison. We could stand there looking over the prison and stop things okay we'll come up with a code right now so um we're me and tangy will go to the bar and figure out the plan you go to the roof and then i'll call out from the crowd either ee -E, ah ah or oh oh based on whether <laughs> the plan is fight now run or keep waiting okay and that way, you can still know what the plan is while having your position, but also we can go coordinate with whoever else Tangi's found. That could work, but I think some of us need to get close to save Lavina if possible. Yes, and I thought it'd be cooler if all three of us were overlooking the prison <laughs> with our cloaks. <laughs> whatever. Uh, okay, but... Let's go find my people. I'm gonna go with Tanji. We have a code if you want to stay here, Dalvin. I think that's good enough. I'm gonna head back to that rooftop. Okay, you do so. <laughs> <laughs> um, <clears throat> excuse me. And at this point, you, Tanji, and you, Fifi, go back to the tavern. And Well, you're about to make your way to the tavern, and then, Tanji, you see... Uh, Archibald, along with some other face, also wearing like some weird cloaks. He says, "Oh my boy, you're back! You're back!" Um, this was the only friend you had. I heard you went in with two other individuals. The other is scheming, and the fourth is sadly going to be burned at the stake if we don't save her. I see. Well, come, let's go into our home. It's less conspicuous than meeting us at the bar here. That works. All right. After some brief amount of time, you go into what seems like to be a hobbit home. Um, you guys all go and crouch. And Fifi, it is a little bit uncomfortable, but you do have to crouch a bit. But nonetheless, um, once you get to like the main living area, it's actually a little bit taller to where um, you don't have to go on your hands and knees, but at least you could just sit down in the same room as them. Perfect. You do sit there, and you see a couple of other remnants of other fates there. Um, a mixture of humans and halflings. And Archibald says, so what is this plan that you speak of? And this is where we're going to take a quick break. So we'll be All back right. in about five minutes. We shall see you guys then. We'll be back. See ya. <laughs>
Welcome back. Alrighty. Oh, I put it in the wrong screen up. Whoops. There we go. <laughs> um, Tanji and Fifi, you guys are in a meeting with some halfling and humans. Um, you have Archibald, who is a ha old halfling priest of Solaris. 
you have a guy named Stefan, who is a former priest of the God of Knowledge. You have Quincy, who is, to you, you find a little bit more important, as he is the one of the last remaining followers of the God of Arts and Music. Um, you also see a dwarven man by the name of Raxton, who it prays to a god of the forge and the dwarves. And you also see a... Uh, by the way, Quincy's a human, Stefan's a human, Archibald's a halfling, Raxton is, of course, a dwarf. And then you do also see the fifth individual. Um, um, I'm trying to come up with her name. Uh, Stephanie, um, who is a priestess for the god of medicine and i just made all that up right on the fly so alrighty. so archibald then says well we are all after introducing himself and after making proper introductions like so what is this plan you have um oh i don't think we've quite properly met right i presume i'm archibald um he point, extends his hand towards you if you fly Nice to meet you, good sir. My name is Fee Fi Fo Fum. You may have heard a poem I wrote. Hmm, um, maybe. Uh, uh, for, so, the plan, that's a, an excellent question, and we've thought a lot about it, so I'm glad you guys are all here. So, as my good friend uh, Tanji has already explained to you, our friend, the witch, is currently imprisoned in the local garrison, and her. with plans of the guards to execute her tonight, and we look to be stopping that. Um, if Sir Galloway, perhaps I'm saying that wrong, is to lose his life tonight, that's not too bad for us. If we are to retrieve the sacred soil he stole from the druids, that's even better. But priority number one is freeing our friend and starting this revolution to let the people of this good town know that the old gods' ways can return, and we must not live under this oppression of a monotheistic society. Uh, Stephanie interjects and says, Wait, Galaran took the druids' supplies for their sacred trees? Yes, I'm afraid that's correct. We met a wise elder druid by the name of Mason in the woods outside this town. I have I have met with Mason. I'm just surprised Galarant's even going after the druids. You know, they were like hands off because they practice their own religion of the forest and what have you. But if Galarant's going after yeah. them, then he might continue to spread. So if we kill Dude, Galarant, I was thinking it wouldn't be yeah. that bad of a plan. Excuse me, but yeah, that's I know I'm a follower. That's of exactly Mason, what I'm saying, but. You know, I think Galarin needs to go. And then Ragson then says, You're damn right he needs to go. I can't even work my craft proper if Galarin's in the way, always post regulations, always demanding that his folk goes first. I say we need to arm the common man of all times, but I can't do that unless that bastard is down. Amen, brother. So it seems we're all uh, in agreement that the purpose of this mission is a good one, and I think now we should talk particulars. Uh, Stefan then says, well, I do agree that Galarin needs to be put down, but how are we going to exactly get to him? He is a powerful paladin, and there are priests, and, well, we don't know how the guards are going to react to this whole thing, and and he looks towards you, Tandri, and how are you able to get your friend out of, off from the stake, and can your friend on the stake be trusted? She is a witch after all. These are all excellent questions. So, uh, I'm not going to answer them in the order you ask. I'm going to answer them in the order that... With, with all due respect, Fifi, I was talking to Tanji. I mean, he's been quite quiet ever since we all gathered here thus far. Yes. I have something to say. I believe I can take on Galarand, for I am the Chosen of Solaris. Uh, Lavina, being a witch, is irrelevant. She is our friend, and she is here to save us. Well, save you. She's here to help. And I forget the other questions. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> How are we going to get to ta to Galley Rand? Well, uh, he's giving a speech tonight, so that's going to be our only opportunity to get him out in the open is at the speech tonight, where he coincidentally will be burning our friend at the stake. So those kind of dovetail nicely into each other. Um, yeah. Can we trust the witch? Uh, all of us would be dead if the witch weren't alive. She saved all of our lives and uh, the life of our buddy who's not here tonight. So, it, like... If you believe in our mission, our mission wouldn't be possible without that witch. Archibald also. then says, well, if she, as long as she's a friend of you all, and as long as she's willing to assist in us in this endeavor, then I have no issues with the witch assisting us this time around. If she, if you, Tanji, thinks she is of good character, then I put my trust of Solaris within you. Thank you. Uh, also, one of us has wings, and I'm going to summon Radiant. Um, yeah, you summon Radiant, and Archibald is amazed, and they're like, oh! And then at this point, Archibald says, well, you are a true chosen of Solaris. I mean, he is even lending you some of his angels to assist you. And then, yes. uh, you, s you spawn Lumen S or Radiant? Uh, Luminous. Radiant. I don't know if I can summon Lumen S because he went down today. Uh, you summon Radiant, and and uh, Tangerine, he says, well, Radiant then says, well, um, Tangerine, it's been a while. Um, I know Luminous has been called for many a time, but could you tell me exactly where are we, and why are these priests uh, are here? Like, why are we here? Oh, yes. You were only around during the Dwarven couple. So, uh, we are in Elderwood. Uh, we are here to set up a revolution against Orpheus because he's been taking over and ruining and desecrating the religions of this place. And uh, you're here to help. Radiant then says, well, if a, if a follower of Orpheus is running things here, then my sword is yours, as always, Tangerine. And if these men and women are able or want to assist in this cause, then I do allow this. Of course. Uh, now, with that being said, where, at what time shall we arrive? Well, uh, um, Stefan says, well, according to this time of day, and he pulls out pocket watch, and he says, well, the, sun, the moon will soon about to rise, and at this point, Whoever wants to gather will gather around the Times Square. You know, an execution will always draw in a lot more people, so that way we could kind of blend into the crowd. I don't know if FIFA is going to blend in very well. It will be dark, but, you know, as far as I know, you're the only tall person in town. I'm excitedly pointing at his pocket watch and saying, see, see, that's what I'm talking about. Remember a couple <laughs> weeks ago when Lavinia and Dalvin <laughs> were asking me what a watch was? That, that's what I, I'm talking about. See, he pulled that out of his pocket and he knows what time it is. That's a watch. Uh, and then, you must be like, an inferior oh, scholar to have such wealth. Well, Find such a mechanical device. Well, it's not the wealth that I have of this watch. It's about the knowledge. Knowing the time of day is quite important. It could help you in such instances such as this. Like, I, like, within one or two hours, Galloon will appear when the moon shines brightest down on the temple. Most likely, your friend will probably be tied at the stake. We also got to point out that not only where the priests would get involved, but we also got to realize that the guard will be there. The guard are just simply doing their job because, well, Sir Galloon is in majority control. You know, taking over for the mayor, who he says he's been sick. Whether that's true or not, I'm not too sure. But... If one thing is for certain, Galen is calling the shots. The moment he goes down, you have to say some word to calm down the chaos and to get the guards on our side. And also, so on top of that, we don't want to kill the executioner. He's just simply doing his job. He's mostly going to be yeah. right behind the stake. If it burns, most likely he'll try to suffocate your friend um, just so that if she were to die then she wouldn't die from the burning and the pain. So we do have to be aware, but don't kill the executioner. He's just simply doing his job. That's very, very well. wise. Because if we, the executioner is one of the guards. If we kill one of the guards, all of the guards are going to turn on us. But if we only kill Galley Rand, we can get all of the guards to turn on Galley Rand. 
So, that's where yeah, that, that's really I'm going to leave that to you, Levi, to rally the guards. I don't have that good of a... If, if you're going to show down with Gallyrand, I can rally the guards. Uh, I, Sounds good. I think I've got the speaking skills to get that done. Although, I will say, I'm a little worried about you dueling him. Like, are you sure you won't need help? My goal is to have uh, Radiant fly around the sky during the dark and dive bomb Lavina so she can immediately free her. And after that, I'll be able to fight alongside Lavina and Radiant against uh, I think Galarand. that's a great idea. I think if all of the townspeople see an angel, the symbol of your god acting in aid of the city i think that'll be a really powerful message for the people who are kind of on the fence obviously everyone in this meeting we're all devoted to the cause but there are some people out there who aren't really decided or they're willing to go with whoever is in power and i think when those people see an angel of solaris acting against galleyrand i think we'll really be able to sway their opinion towards our side that sounds great well, you guys finish off the planning. Dalvi. As... <coughs> excuse me. As the night is approaching and you're standing on top of the roof, you do notice like a large gathering of crowd going up towards the center of the city. And along that, you do see a caged caravan, a caravan where prisoners would be taken in. And you see Lavina... Uh, being put into the cage you see that her hands are um, shackled um, with the types of shackles that would cover the entire hand and she is also has her mouth tied up you know it would make sense like if she's able to cast spells they want to make every precaution to ensure that doesn't happen so they put her into the cage and the caravan is now um, well with the horse riding towards the center of town and there's crowds slowly gathering as the night falls what do you do? Let's get into oh. the chat up front. Oh wait, you're talking to Talon, yeah. sorry. Could I could I take one of my crossbow bolts, tie my rope, and I'll stick it into the rooftop in case I need to like scaffold down? Sure. You take an arrow, you lodge it right into the top of the roof, and you have the other end of the rope, which I'm assuming you're tying to yourself. Well, no, I was gonna, I was gonna kind of drop it towards the ground so that, like, I would just shimmy me down. Oh, yeah, you can do that. That's not an issue. All right. Cool. I don't think I have anything in my inventory to, to. I don't think I can shoot from this far away. Um. Hmm. How the crowd's not in front of the in front of the stake or anything yet, right? No, the stagecoach is currently taking Lavina and the guards went around towards the center of town. Um, most of the townsfolk are lighting torches because it is getting dark out. Wait, so they're not coming over here? They're going somewhere else? They're going towards the center of town, yeah. I told the group I'd be here, but I will... I will... S I guess climb down the rope and then try to follow stealthily. Yeah, there's no need for stealth check. There's a large crowd and you're a small, you are a dwarf, so you are able to blend in perfectly well. You do you see, you do you follow them all the way towards the center of town? Yes. All right, you do that, and as you do, you see a, some crowd gathering. You do some people like boo at Lavina a bit for being a witch. Um, then you see the guardsmen. Uh, you see the executioner like um, tying up Lavina to the stake post, which go ahead and make a perception check, actually. Perception is a plus one. Uh, that is uh, 16 on the die, 17. Okay, you do see that as Lavina is being tied up to the stake, you do notice that the base of the stake is a little bit weaker than it should, probably due to the crossbow bolts were shot earlier and the base actually being weakened, probably from the damage from the fallen cart that you saw. But perhaps 
with enough power, maybe Lavina could possibly get out. But she is also um, surrounded by a lot of coal and a lot of firewood on top of that. Uh, okay, she's currently tied up. <clears throat> yep. Are the guards like perched around her? Um, the guards are kind of like at the base of the executioning area along with the stage. Kind of like as security to back them off and there's also guards on the sides of the crowd too trying to keep them in order. So I can't just rush there without an incident. Um, I'm going to try to use the crowd to try to get closer without, you know, causing a commotion because I am by myself in this situation. Yep, you do so uh, and you get as close as you possibly can that you're still able to see Lavina. You are able to get closer. I would say about like there's two rows of people in front of you um but you are a dwarf so you are small so you get to see like what basically children and halflings and dwarves would see but that is the closest you could get obscene into lavina so you are able to get as close as you possibly can <coughs> Excuse right. me. and i guess the only thing else i want to do is probably just make sure she can know that i'm there somehow okay you kind of look around and as you look around we shift to um the back part of the crowd where you tangent along with some of the other um priests are you are following along with be flying goes we all spread about to make sure that we'll keep the other priests at bay just make sure you go after galarand and when you signal for radiant to come down just let her know we've spoken about this and then well at that point we all are gonna do our thing if you have any other cohorts into this plan besides Lavina, let us know now so that way we don't confuse over any enemies or what have you. There's a dwarf on the roof. Don't kill him. Well, <laughs> if he's on the roof, they shouldn't have an issue then. Um, I would suggest either communicating with your dwarven friend up on the roof about the plan. All right. I'll get uh, closer we've, to we've the got front. a code. We've got a code. Don't worry. He, he knows what's up. Very well. Okay. well. I do wish the both of you luck and may the gods aid us tonight and then they all walk into the crowd dispersed amen and uh <laughs> i'm going to get as close to the front as i can yeah <laughs> to uh, like yeah. dalvin is getting close to yeah. the you get close and you do see a dwarven man resembling dalvin close to the crowd dalvin that's dalvin he's not supposed to be here he's supposed to be on top of the roof i'm going to tap him on the back Okay, good. Yeah, now that the buddies <laughs> see, clearly see that he's a friend. Um, I'm also going to approach as much as I can while I'm going to pretend to be a hunchback, I guess. Okay. <laughs> okay. Go ahead and make Drop. a general cursor check. This is not necessary. This is to see how well you play off the hunchback gimmick. You can walk on your knees. <laughs> well, oh, walking on the knees is probably pretty good, too. So either way, you gotta make a crystal check. Well, well, and now you going for the hunchback or walking on your knees? I think knees is better. Okay. Or both. All right. You crouch <laughs> down, try to walk on your knees, and then realize it's been uncomfortable. So like you're kind of duck walking, but you're kind of a little bit above average, and they kind of see you as like a weird dude, you're kind of a mixture of both hunchback and a weird dude. So as like you're kind of walking, um, like duck walking. The I'm not too confident in this disguise. <laughs> but uh, assuming I see Dalvin too, I don't gotta worry about the. Yeah, you look down and you see Dalvin. <laughs> yeah, so I, I don't have to worry about the bird call system anymore. Yeah, you do see him, um, but he's supposed to be on the roof. It's weird. Why is he here? I don't know, but I don't question it. I'm just gonna look at Tanji as if to suggest you're the boss here. You know, I'll go when you say. Okay. Uh, once, uh, Lavina eventually gets up on the stand, uh, Tanji's going to message, uh, cast a spell message, uh, cantrip, which has a range of, uh, six spaces, so you're, I assume I can... You're argue. able to do it, it's not an issue, bro. Okay. Uh, we got you. We're all here. That's all I said. Okay. She responds, message says, can you help me, please? You know, they got me tied up. 
I can't cast any spells until you, I get the stuff off me. Don't worry. Alrighty. Um, so, do you guys say anything, or should we just move on? Then? We can move on. Alright. Some time passes, and as time passes, you see Francis Nightshade now wearing a fold-on ceremonial priest garbs, saying, Ladies and gentlemen of Elderwood, we thank you again for joining us for our ceremony. Tonight is a special night. For once, we will show what we do with lawbreakers in our city. See, since we have claimed this city in the name of Orpheus, Sir Galarand and myself have been made it clear that the guardsmen will serve and properly restore order as it has been since we have taken over. And earlier today, some lawbreakers broke into the city gates. Some heretics from other fates trying to test the power of our god. No matter, we have captured one of them tonight. Not only that, but this individual is also a witch. A heretic against our faithful magics. We will not let her wicked ways and her weird sense of using usage of the arcane not go unpunished. Ladies and gentlemen, allow me to present, present our speaker tonight, Sir Galloran Blackwater, savior of Elderwood and the chosen of our god Orpheus. And, he kinda, and you hear some like half claps but then turns into full claps. Forcefully, you aren't too sure. But let me show you an image of Sir Galloran Blackwater here to kind of tease you guys a bit. Um, let me just get the image. On the stream here. or... Um, through the Discord. Okay. And I'll put it on the stream, too. Uh, well, bam, I'll put his token on there, and then I'll add it to the stream. But <coughs> he is a middle-aged man covered in gray plate mail, wearing dark blue garbs. You can tell he is a man of experience, and he, he is a man of experience. Um, he has long... Hair, gray hair, gray beard. Um, okay, here's the token for the stream to get a good idea what he looks like. Um, he comes out, long sword on his side, and he goes, Ladies and gentlemen of Alderhal, I do know that some of you have been reluctant into my god's teachings. I know it is of foreign teachings it may be taboo but as you have seen throughout this city as our god has instructed me to do i have purged this city of all the fates knowing that there is only one faith that now controls the city and in doing so we were able to properly restore order into the city there are no more criminals on the streets no more thugs to threaten the common people of elderwood our guardsmen are more stronger than and they w ever were. And in doing so, and with the word of the mayor, may Orpheus heal him, have allowed us to properly restore order to Elderwood. And it will not stop in Elderwood. It will go far beyond Elderwood. In doing so, we will ensure that the entire regions shall know about Orpheus's lights in the darkness. We shall know everyone in the regions that our savior Orpheus will be here to guide us in these darkening times. Now, I know you all came here for an execution of which and and he, at this point he grabs a torch and he lights it. I rip off my cowl and I draw my sword and raise it to the air and I say ee ee. I scream <laughs> it. Uh... As he raises the torch and put and is about to seemingly drop it near the Venus, he says, "Let this be a lesson to evil doers who wish to challenge Orpheus and his wrath. Let this be a lesson that no one shall stand aside between our cleansing of the world." And as soon as he says that, you see Radiant uh, knock the torch off of Sir Galloran's hand and 
as Radiant, the seemingly angel, this bright light in this darkness as the moon shines down. And Radiant goes towards Lady Radiant and says, You shall now kill an innocent woman. Solaris is here, along with his followers and the aid of the gods. We shall not let Orpheus rule over this land. And as that's where we're going to end the session. So next week, big ass oh. combat as we closing down on this arc. And we'll see you guys next week. We'll see if the party levels up next week too. If they survive, that is. So with that in mind, we shall see you all next week. Take care, guys. All right.